Hello everyone and welcome to SK Shadow. Welcome to another episode of our F1 22 My Team Career Mode. And this time we are at France. So um, last time out we managed to get ourselves into P5 I think. So we'll be hoping to try and carry on that uh, run of form there. But we are going to have to decide if we are keeping our teammate Jensen Button. We're looking at who else we could afford. We've only got 8 million so realistically it's... Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc, that sort of thing. But I doubt Leclerc would want to come to our team. Um, and Norris isn't really that much better than Button. And to be honest, Button has been putting in the performances. Yes, he has got quite a few less points than us, but he has had issues like um, DNFs and just general uh, other things like getting caught out by other people's crashes and stuff like that. So we decide to stick with him. We're going to choose the low risk of uh, paying him 6.3 million because we don't want him to reject us. And uh, he accepts it. And there we go. Jensen Button is going to be our teammate uh, until the end of the season. So we're into the race weekend now. We've had a couple of um, developments in as well for chassis and aerodynamics, I think that looked like. So our car is going to be that little bit faster. Uh, and it looked like on the weather report, it's going to be dry throughout. So once again, no issue with rain. Uh, on the performance chart, you can see we are just a little bit below Haas, um, who has also made huge progress, uh, as well as McLaren. So we are pretty much closing the gap there on the Red Bull uh, and the Mercedes, but we'll have to see what that gives us in qualifying. So straight into our first run of Q1 here, we are looking for a good performance. Um, it's relatively easy to do well in France, I find. It's obviously not the most exciting track, and as we know, it's not actually going to feature in um, next year's calendar in real life. Uh, so we won't be seeing it for a little while. Um, but it's a track that, once again, I've always done reasonably well out. Uh, well out, well as, as Latifi gets out of the way of us uh, very nicely. Uh, we're not held up by him for too long. Um, but yeah, we got P5 in last race, so we'll be aiming to try and keep the uh, momentum going and uh, end up with another point to finish this race. But... The way we get a points finish is to qualify reasonably high up because even though there's, you know, a few straights here, it's actually not the easiest track to overtake on uh, in real life. In game, it's a little bit easier, but then it's always a bit easier in game to overtake anyway. But our first run actually puts us uh, in P3 at the moment ahead of our teammate by quite a bit. We've done a 131.3 uh, and Jensen Martin is on 132.1. Um, and I said Q1 earlier, I think, but it does look like we are on a short quality. Um, so whatever time we end up at the end of this session is going to be where we end up um, on the starting grid. But we watch our teammate finish his second lap. And where does he put it? A 130.7. That is a hell of an improvement from his first lap. That's insane. That puts him in P5 ahead of us. So we have still got a good five temps, um, even more than that, actually, like five, six temps to try and find to be able to be anywhere near him. But on to our final lap, our final attempt to try and qualify anywhere in the top 10 would be ideal. Uh, we are currently two temps up of Magnussen, but bear in mind he hasn't finished his second lap yet, and we're actually only half a temp up from our fastest attempt so far. So we're going to have to try and find all the time in Sector 3, um, which isn't going to be easy because it's all just a big swooping right-hand corner, pretty much. It's not going to be easy to find time, but we did manage to find time through that chicane, and we are now two temps, almost three temps up, uh, on our best time coming through these final few corners now three temps up as we get a little bit squirrely on the exit there we lose a little bit of time but we do gain it back through here are we going to be able to hold on to it that is the question as we round the final corner three temps up almost three and a half temps up where is that going to place us with p12 at the moment we cross the line and where are we? We are P8 with our teammate in P7. Uh, There's actually quite a big gap between us. Uh, Button on a 130.7, I think. And we're on a 130.9. But we are going to be starting alongside each other for the race. Here we are again then at La Castellet for another round of this year's Formula One World Championship. 
Renault took their first French Grand Prix win here all the way back in the inaugural race in 1906, but it was another 73 years before they could take their second. I'm sure Alpine will be pushing hard to delight the local fans here today. Mastering a lap at Paul Ricard means getting to know 15 corners, six go to the left and nine go to the right for an overall lap distance of 3.6 miles. The two halves of the long Mistral Strait are separated by a heavy braking zone into a potential overtaking hotspot at the chicane. And watch out for drivers running into the distinctive coloured stripes, which are low in grip and highly abrasive. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Perez, Max Verstappen and Button, Paul, Mick Schumacher, Magnussen and Lando Norris, Bottas, Sainz, Pierre Gasly and Sonoda, Ocon, Joe, Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Ricardo, Vettel, Albon and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. So going into this race, it looks like strategy normally is medium to hard, but it says based on our performance in practice, we can do a soft to medium. So, I mean, it said that a few times, but we haven't really trusted it. But this time, I think I'm going to uh, I'm going to gamble and see what happens because we are going to have the tire advantage on pretty much everyone else on the start. Uh, so you see, we line up with a purple parking there. As you see, we are on the softs, everyone else on the medium, so we should get a better start than everyone else. We'll have to see. Uh, Schumacher actually gets a pretty decent start. He's already up the inside of our teammate uh, into the first corner. As we have a huge lockup and hit into the back of our teammate, somehow we don't lose our wing, but we are forced wide um, from our teammate. We do manage to get ahead of him, and uh, unfortunately we didn't get ahead of the Hass of Schumacher who started behind us. So we haven't actually gained any positions because we obviously gained a position on Button, but we lost the position on Schumacher. Um, but for these first few laps, we should have the better pace um, because obviously we should have better grip than the uh, other guys on mediums. And on to the end of lap one, our softs have allowed us to close up on Schumacher. We try and go around the outside of him through here. And uh, we've made the position. Although we go a little bit wide onto uh, the little bumps there and that has not helped us because that allows Schumacher to uh, stick it up the outside. But we give him the big squeeze and uh, I think we have solidified our work there up into P6 as onto lap three. DRS is now enabled. We are nowhere near getting DRS unfortunately because the person ahead of us is George Russell. And as we know, uh, those Mercedes are a fair bit faster than our own car. So I don't think we are going to be challenging them, unfortunately. Um, behind us, Schumacher is just about in the DRS zone by the looks of it, but he is fighting our teammate. Um, so hopefully they fight each other pretty hard and then that allows us to build a gap. We will have to see as onto lap four, it's pretty much the same situation. We've lost another second to Russell ahead. Um, so those Mercedes certainly uh, having the better pace than us this time round. Uh, behind us, Schumacher is actually catching us, which is a problem because that Haas is rather slippery in a straight line as you see just how much closing speed he has on us, even in the relatively short straight of the pit straight. Um, we're going to have to see if he can... Well, he's going to have to see if he can mount a move. As he does, we give him a huge squeeze, pretty much send him right onto the kerb there. A um, little bit of dirty driving from ourselves, but it was needed to uh, keep the position because, like I say, that Haas is just so much faster than us in a straight line. Uh, but our fighting has allowed our teammate to actually try and send it down the inside of the Haas now. Is he going to be able to keep the position? I'm not sure. Sounds like there was a bit of contact there. Fortunately, don't have the replay for that. Um, but, yeah, there we go. Button is now ahead. So that is us up into P6 and 7, exactly where we started, um, but the other way around. As you hear, our engineer Mark is telling us that the grip on these tyres is going to start falling away soon because bear in mind we are going to have to make a pit stop a little bit earlier uh, than the majority of the others. As he actually says, we're entering our pit window, so in a couple of laps time, 
we will be going towards the pits. Uh, Button is going to have DRS on us, but he's not quite as quick as the Haas of Schumacher in a straight line. And we do have a fair amount of ERS, but he does. He actually sends it down the inside. That was a bit of an opportunistic move uh, from our teammate there. Having just signed a new contract, he's thinking, you know what, I'm just going to send it down the guy that just gave me all the money. Um, six point whatever mil of it. As lap seven, he tries it again and we give absolutely no room to him because we want to keep this position. Um, looks like we've pushed him back into Schumacher, so I don't know if they're going to be fighting each other through here. Um, but we are going to be thinking about going to the pits. We are supposed to pit in one lap's time, so we'll see if we actually do that. But our tyres, as you can see, are 51% already on lap eight uh, as our teammate just gets straight past us. So, to be honest, I didn't really fight that just because I know that I'm going to be coming in this lap or next lap. So we might as well just allow him to try and build himself a little bit of breathing space to Schumacher. Uh, while we then go into the pits at the end of this lap, I think we will have to see. And there we go, as expected, end of lap eight, we are into the pits. We get a uh, warning for exceeding track limits because that's a bug in this game. For some reason, when you enter uh, the pit lane in France, you get a warning for exceeding track limits, which is pretty tricky when you're on um, strict corner cutting because you can actually end up with a penalty for entering the pits if you've picked up a couple of warnings already um, but we get a 2.3 second stop that is very rapid from our uh, pit crew and um, where do we end up P21 with Bottas just behind us uh, because Bottas was the only other guy that started on soft I think so he has come in for his mediums as well but it does mean that we've got a nice bit of clean air to be able to uh, set in some solid sector times uh, and make sure that when the other guys come in they don't overcut us. Um, but we get a little bit of squirrely there. A little bit sideways having to correct the uh, slide. Which is not going to help us. But we have made up. That looks like about two seconds on the uh, pair of Williams up ahead of us in one lap. So it is not going to be long until we are stuck behind a little bit of traffic. Hopefully when we do get to them we are able to get past them relatively quickly. Uh, as on to the end of lap 10. Having been two and a half seconds behind at the start of it, we have already closed to uh, to uh, Williams there as we send it down the inside of Latifi. We are not waiting for the DRS zone. We are just going to send it um, because we don't want to be stuck behind two Williams going through the faster sections as we would lose so much time. We are closing on Albon. Do we send it down the inside? We do not. We come relatively close to hitting him, um, but not as close as when we actually did hit our teammate in lap one. We're using all the ERS we can. He covers the outside line, so we take the inside line. He gives us a little bit of space there, thankfully, rather than uh, keeping his nose in. Otherwise, could have actually been a quite a nasty accident there, but he gives us the space, and that is us up into P19. Got about four seconds to stroll on lap 12. Make that 2.8 seconds. So we are gaining on the pair of Aston Martins, uh, who are fighting each other as well so that is going to allow us to catch up to them a little bit faster as uh, on to the end of lap 12 the first of the medium runners are actually into the pits so we're not going to have to deal with uh, Lance Stroll in the Aston Martin because he has moved into the pits as up ahead Hamilton actually ends up coming out of the pits just behind Vettel so that is not going to be good for his race as he's trying to send it down the inside now is he going to get the move done no, uh, no, yes he did. I thought that was uh, Hamilton going wide there, but Vettel ends up making a mistake. Clearly uh, too pressurised by Hamilton sending it down the inside. And we get past him nice and easily. There we go, up into B12. We have got Hamilton and Verstappen on the hards ahead of us. I don't know how we're only a second behind Hamilton, because he was quite a bit further ahead of us before we went into the pits. As we get past Button, Schumacher... Perez has come out just ahead of Hamilton there. And um, Bottas comes through to P7. It looks like that soft to medium strategy has worked absolute wonders. <laughs> All that um, free air running, I guess. We've managed to um, make up loads of time as Hamilton makes a mistake going side by side with Perez. We capitalise on that. We send it down inside and that is us up into P5. Now we are going to have the DRS here on Perez. Are we going to be able to send it down inside? Unfortunately not, we're just not quite close enough, but 
give it a couple laps. You never know. We might be. As uh, if you watched last race, you will know that us and Perez have a little bit of history. As there is a yellow flag. Who is that for? It looks like it's a Mercedes going slowly. It's, no, it's not. It's a Red Bull going slowly. Max Verstappen. His engine has blown up. Those Red Bulls really not having a great time of engine, especially Max Verstappen. He is so far behind in the championship now that, I mean, he's not going to win it. But, yeah, it's all been reliability, pretty much. Good thing we did not choose the Red Bull engine uh, when we were choosing engines. We have the, so far, pretty trustworthy Mercedes engine in the back of our car. But that promotes us up into P4 as I think we're psychic because that is Russell going slowly. And that is a safety car on lap 15. We are in the podium positions. We are in P3. Are we on for our second podium of this career mode so far in Season 1? This is crazy. Anyway, safety car is ending lap 17. Can we get a good exit? Can we get the good run on Perez? We have had a much better exit than the Red Bull. Although we don't seem to have the straight line speed of him. We send it down the outside. Give him just about enough room, and that is us up into P2. <laughs> but Perez is very, very close to us. He's going to try and go down the inside. We squeeze him as much as we can, cut him off, and we're still in P2. Um, but Leclerc is already pulled away past DRS. So by the time DRS is enabled, we are not going to have it, unfortunately. So unless Perez and Hamilton end up battling each other quite hard, we're going to be a sitting duck. But Mark is telling us that Hamilton has an issue. So I don't know how slow he's going to go. We'll have to see. Sometimes the issue can last like 20 seconds and then it's fine. But on to lap 19 and Hamilton is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> he has dropped back so far. He must have had a serious engine issue. So his teammate, Russell, out the session already with an engine failure. And then Hamilton, clearly having some sort of engine issue, is nowhere to be seen. So lap 19, Perez is within half a second of us, I think. He is going to get past us relatively quickly. As much as I would like to stick on to B2, we actually let him pass because, I mean, the guys we're going to be fighting for this podium now are going to be Magnussen and Button because Signs is seemingly nowhere to be seen. Um, Hamilton has got his issue, so he's dropped back. And then the other Mercedes and Red Bull are out of the session now. So we've let Perez through uh, and then we're going to try and latch on to his DRS for as long as we can. Um, because obviously if we can do that we should be able to pull away relatively quickly from the guys behind us and end up with this podium relatively unchallenged so lap 22 we've already pretty much gained a second on Magnussen as uh, on the outboard we see our teammate is under quite a bit of pressure uh, from the McLaren here who is going to be victor in this battle it looks like it is the McLaren unfortunately so that is our teammate drop back a place. Um, so that is uh, Lando Norris now into P5. So that means our teammate must be P6 currently. But still, a double points finish would be very handy for ourselves, especially as we are currently only one point behind uh, our current rivals, Alpine, in the Constructors' Championship. Because as things stand, we'll be pretty clear, actually. Uh, quite a few points ahead of them and... That means we'll be P4, so pretty much best of the rest already. Uh, lap 25, we are still very, very close to Perez. Seems like we actually have a fair bit of pace. I don't know if we're going to sort of charge up and try and go for a last lap lunge, but it doesn't look like we've quite got enough pace, unfortunately. Magnussen and Norris, we have pulled away very quickly from them, so we are going to be fine. As on to the final corner there, Leclerc wins the race, Perez comes home in second, and we get our third not third second podium we're in p3 we get our second podium of this career mode so far and here we are a team that is no stranger to the podium taking their place on top once again a sublime race today and a stunning win for ferrari Well, there we have it. Final classification. 
ourselves in P3. Our teammate actually did manage to get back past Norris, so he's in P5. So I think this is probably our team's best result so far. I'm not certain on that, but um, yeah, I mean, we definitely had the pace there. 134.1 was our best, teammate 134.3. So we were a little bit uh, quicker than our teammate in terms of uh, just straight up pure pace. Um, but yeah, you see at the bottom there, George Russell, DNF, Max Verstappen, DNF. Not good for their uh, their title fights there, unfortunately. Um, Charles Leclerc, still miles ahead in championship, 101 points. I don't think anyone is catching him. Uh, we are still in P7, and Jensen Martin is still in P12, um, but we have given ourselves some major points there. I mean, we're only 17 points off of Max Verstappen. That's how bad his races have gone. Uh, but there you go. We have jumped Alpine. They've managed to gain one point, but we have gained 25 points. So that is us solidly up into P4 in the constructors. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that fantastic stuff, and hit the bell so you don't miss our next race in Hungary.